Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self Group and is part of an Education and Love series. In the Session 1 Reminders and Homework Review presentation, Mary revises and provides reminders from the previous Understanding Mind Loving Self two-day session and reviews the homework of the participants. Recorded on the 7th of June, 2016, in Newseville, Queensland, Australia. So I'm here this morning to review session one with you guys and go through the homework. So session one started all the way back on Saturday morning. And who can tell me what is the name of that entire session? The first two days, what did we call that whole session? Ange? Understanding my unloving self? Yes. And it's good to have a think about that, isn't it? Because as you know, our whole group is called Developing My Loving Self. And yet our whole first session is all about understanding my unloving self. So before we can even start developing our loving self, we have to understand where it's at, don't we? In terms of our unloving self. So on Saturday morning then, Jesus introduced this, this whole group, the Developing My Loving Self. And he talked to us a bit about the importance of the group and why it came next after Will. We'd had Will. That was all about this gift that God's given us that we have to, you know, take action. We had the four tools. But now we're talking about our loving self and the key lessons in there. And what was one of the reasons he said it was so important to go through the material that that we have in this Developing My Loving Self group. Does anyone remember we touched on it uh, when I finished up on Sunday night? It was about how communication happens. Yvonne? Um, about God can only communicate with us um, through our, with our emotions, our feelings. Yes. And so it was really important that we realise that we don't go through that whole loop of um, from there to thought to... Yes. Lots yeah. of filters. To exactly. <laughs> Our facade wants to tell us, no, no, I feel one thing and, uh, and sends off this pseudo feeling in God's direction. And God's saying, this isn't the real deal. This isn't who you are. This isn't what you're feeling right now. And so it's so important to work through what we really feel and start to connect to this real self, which is all ahead of us still. Uh, in the program but he talked about that communication style remember he talked about God and us and God wants to know us from our feeling state he communicates through feelings and we're often trying to jump ahead have our own little thoughts and, and communicate with language. That's how we do it with each other most of the time now still and we want to do that with God and really that doesn't work so it's so important that we start to connect to what's really happening and, and everything that's really outlined on our, our program diagram. <laughs> we'll call it that. Okay. All right. So after that, who remembers what is the very first uh, presentation then of new material that Jesus gave us? What was the name of that talk, that first talk? Can you cast your mind back there? Who? Kerry? Just keep your hand up. No, behind you, jo Joyce. Sorry. <laughs> creation of my pain. The creation of my pain. Thank you. So this is where we learnt how it all got started, where, how, where the pain came from. And do you remember Jesus started that discussion by outlining three sources of our pain, of our current pain? Pete? Joyce? 
if you keep your hand up, yeah. There's my pain, um, parents and family pain, and then society pain. Yeah, it wasn't quite pain though, was it? It was called sin. Sin. Yeah. So that's we, this is where the pain comes from when society or our parents they they sin towards us, and then when we use our own will to sin. These are all things that create pain, don't they? Yeah. And remember, we said that sin is simply missing the mark in love. So every time that happens, either towards us in someone's treatment towards us or in our will-based actions, we're creating pain. Now, what was the biggest source of pain, he said? <laughs> Eloisa. <laughs> Me and my sin and the choices I make. Yes. So my sin, my personal choice... To sin creates the majority of my pain. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. So we had the three, we had the family sin, society sin, and then my personal choice, and this was the biggest creator of my pain. And often we want to say it's the other way around, don't we? We say we're full of pain because of what everyone else has done to me and want to deny this personal choice. And if you think about our first group in this series about will, we are engaging our will to sin. So it makes sense, doesn't it, that this is creating the most of our pain. Okay, let's move on quickly to the next major point that Jesus made in that talk. And that was about, okay, all these sins created my pain. It, it, these, these sins have been the sources of my pain. Now there's some things inside of me as a result of that that are creating pain in my life all the time. He called them the creators of pain. What were those two things, Rachel? Our fears and our error, uh, erroneous um, version of love. Version of love, beautiful. So our fear, our false beliefs that we are saying are real. So through other people sitting towards us, we might have taken on some fears, we think they're real and we, we're continuing to use our will in harmony with those things. And all our love turned backwards, our erroneous version of love. They are the sources of our pain. Okay, all right. And then he went on to say, didn't he, that there's many types of pain that we then have in our life. And we talked a little bit about that when I finished off with you guys on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And what was, yeah, we're not going to, we don't have time to go through all the types. <laughs> They're far too many, hey? But um, so we're aware there was lots of types of pain. But Jesus finished that talk with one really important point, And it was what happens when all of that pain continues on, all of our personal sin, all of our fear and erroneous versions of love are driving our life long term. What is created? Alex? Uh, suffering. Suffering, yeah. yeah. Oh! <laughs> After the fact, it was a little <laughs> jack-in-the-box up and down. Okay, so today's, today's the day we have to get used to the new, uh, the new procedure, hey? <laughs> it was a bit of a fear-based jump there, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, so suffering. Suffering, and that's something just for us all to keep in mind. Okay. So, anything, any questions from that? We're going to move on to the next talk that he gave. Who remembers what that was called? Uh, Helga? The creation of my facade. Yes, yes. So we learnt where our pain has come from and is continuing to come from. Now we learnt how did this facade 
get started? What, how did it get created? Who can remember the really key thing? Denise, up the back. I was taught to fear pain. Yes, yes. That was pretty powerful, wasn't it? This, this fear of pain was learned. So I'll just put that next to colour. So I was taught to fear pain. And remember we talked a little bit about on Sunday afternoon about how that happened. We revised that and Jesus explained that even more in his talk, that there was this sort of punishment even, a withdrawal of love when we felt certain things. And do you remember Jesus highlighted in the talk that this, this, is, this fear of pain that we learned, it's, it's what created the facade, but that fear which is really the beginnings of this global terror, it's often linked with a feeling of survival, isn't it? Like, because the people who were caring for me withdrew from me when I felt certain things. And that's often why this can feel so, so this global terror can feel like such a big deal. Yeah, remember that? Okay, so that's how the facade got started. We didn't have a lot of will-based choice in that. It was like a survival thing. But what happened next? This is important. Okay, Kate. Um, I like how AJ said we embellished it, like we <laughs> built it even more. <laughs> we, we put pretty flowers and gold <laughs> trimmings on it. And <laughs> or like I said the other day, you know, we built other mechanisms and treadmills and various bells and whistles on top yeah mm. thanks kate so this is also important because this is i chose i chose to maintain the facade and i chose to continue to believe the fear of my pain so it's my choice here My choice to continue to fear and continue to, to generate this big facade. Remember all that? Okay. And then we briefly touched on, well, you guys touched a fair bit on the techniques, the, the bells and whistles that this lovely, lovely, not so lovely, facade uses. And can anyone just tell me a couple of those before we move on? Uh, Maxine? Justify, minimise, um, denial. Yes. Blaming others. Yes. All those favourite things that we do, hey? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And Jesus, you want to say something in the back there? Oh, I thought you had your hand up. Oh, <laughs> he didn't have his hand up. He was pointing you to stand up. <laughs> so you're saying that as soon as the mic comes to you, stand up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. No, I'm, I'm actually saying that before the mic even gets to you, uh, as soon up. as Mary has yeah. chosen you, stand up. And yeah. then the mic runner also can see you a lot e more yes. easily. Logical. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So more time out there in the breeze. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yes. But back to topic. Thank you, Maxine. They are, they are some of the many techniques that we use, aren't they? Yeah. And, and you remember in the feedback session, he talked about how often we, we are a bit more hot on some of the other, the other techniques we use, like blaming or judging, but we skip over denial. We go, nothing to see. Nothing exists, and that's one of the crucial things for our, that our facade does, doesn't it? And we'll get onto that in, when we look at the next talk. Okay, so <coughs> we're right with that. Yep. <coughs> Who can tell me the name of the third talk in this Understanding My Loving Self session? Uh, Joellen? Accepting My Facade. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, and there was two major things that Jesus talked about in that talk. So in, in accepting my facade, he said, what is the thing that I have to accept? Uh, Catherine, if you stand up. Um, we have to accept the true state of which God believes, um, God's belief of our true state, not what our belief is. Yes. So, yes, very good. We have to accept the state of our facade, don't we? My facade. We've got to see what's really going on and see it from a perspective, from God's perspective of not just what I'd like to believe, but what is really happening here in, in my facade and what is, what is my facade really doing? Because remember, what were the two main purposes of our facade? Ange? Oh, you don't have to stand up, sorry. <laughs> just keep your hand up. Yeah. Um, to desensitise ourselves to our pain. Yep. And to um, avoid the terror, the yes. global emotion of terror. Yes. Yep. So detune from pain, desensitise from it and avoid the terror. That's the facade's role and duty. It follows the commands of this fear and this pain. It says, okay, we'll stay away. So they're the controllers, aren't they? Remember he said, and the facade is like the servant, the humble servant. Okay, yes, master. Yep. I'll do whatever you say. So we have to accept the state of this facade that's really dealing in lies, isn't it? Lies and avoidance and denial. Yeah. And then what was the other key thing that he said was so important in accepting, in this process of accepting the facade? Graham, at the back. It just is, so have compassion for it. Yes, because exactly. Mm. We've learned how it, we've learned how our pain got created. We've learned about how the facade came into being, and here it is. We've accepted how it is. Now, the most important, crucial ingredient is having compassion for this, for this this situation that we're in. Because it's only when we have compassion and use our will that anything will change. If we try and bully ourselves out of that state, it's not going to work. Yeah. Okay. So that's about what we covered. And then Jesus did the feedback session and we mentioned a couple of, of things already about how we favour denial <laughs> and uh, like to... And that, that puts us in quite a bit of, well, it, it retards our progress, doesn't it? It slows us down because often there's things happening around us, attractions and conversations, and we're saying, oh, no, that's nothing to do with me, you know. And when we could be saying, wow, could this have something to do with me? <coughs> this, have I really been honest with myself about where I'm at with these things? Yeah. And the second point that he raised was about how this Accepting and deconstructing, which you'll get into today, of the facade is the, it's almost the most uh, precarious time in your own progression because there's a lot of challenges and these lies, the lies that the facade deals in, don't like being challenged and unless we develop, remember he talked about the aspiration to develop the four tools which are faith, truth, emotion and action. Unless we develop this aspiration in this early stage, we're going to struggle. So following on today, Jesus is going to give you heaps more tools and practicalities and information about all of this. So, But we're all right. We, we understand that we were understanding our unloving self and we talked about the creation of our pain, how it got there, the creation of our facade and what its job is and how we're going to start to come to accept this state of affairs as it is right now. Okay, so let's get on to looking at some of your homework, okay? Now we don't, the one thing to say in reviewing homework, 
is that we don't have time for stories. <laughs> I know what it's like when you hit upon something massive and you think, oh, it's clear, it's because this happened in 1972 and then, then that thing happened and then my mother and then the father and then the, you know, the new school or whatever, but we just don't have time for that, so. <laughs> okay? Um, so, but let's hear from you about some of the things that you learned about yourself in considering you had five questions to have a look at. And what did you learn, anyone, about the lies that you tell yourself about yourself? Helga? This is abbreviated. Yep, just hold the mic a bit closer. That's, it. That's the abbreviated version. <laughs> As I have been a liar, a thief, a murderer, a prostitute, a manipulator, an angry, nasty bitch, a betrayer, a loveless wife and mother, a ducking coward, and an unloving everything in between, and seemingly got away with it, mm -hmm. I keep telling myself that just another little unloving thing won't make a big difference. Ah, so you, I feel you being quite judgmental of yourself there. Yes. And I can feel a lot of, you know, you're, you're not practicing the compassion part of the equation no, or understanding how these things were created. Yes. But really also, so that's something for you to have a look at. I, yes, okay. I wanted to really write down what has been driving my life, although a little bit is changing lately. I'm looking at things differently. Okay, just but stop getting into a story. <laughs> I'm talking about the way that you're judging your past actions mm. and that you're not really looking at... you. It's not that you, I know that a lot of those things have happened in your life and you have done a lot of those things and you have used your will in those things. But the feeling that you have is not, is not a feeling of like, right, I'm going to deconstruct how I did all of those things and how those things were created in my life and what the pain I was running from and what the facade was telling me was okay. You're just judging. Yes. So that's going to that's gonna hold you back. But the other thing I get that you're saying is that you're saying, look, I've sinned so much in the past, so a little bit more sin won't hurt or won't make it that much worse than an already crappy situation. That's what I've been is. telling myself. Yes. yes. And that you're right. Because and I thought that was the question. What have I been telling myself all my life? It was the question. Yes. 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 But I was just helping you with some of thank the emotions that are holding you back in the way that you framed your answer. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. So, who else? Tara? If you keep your hand up, yeah. Um, I can accept that I, you know, physical pain, I can tolerate that, and I know I'm scared of a lot of things, but I don't have terror. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I still yeah, really can't recognise that. Yeah. Yeah. So you at some somehow to realise it's a lie though that you, you've recognised look, it's logical that I have terror, but I'm still telling myself that I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I can look around and go, Oh well I'm scared of this right now, speaking and I'm scared of spiders and I'm scared of this and that and but um nothing really bad happened in my life to that made me terror. be so terrified. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Who else? Alwyn in front there. If you just pass it to Alwyn there, yeah. Um, I'm an unlovable and can and, and am incapable of loving. Yeah. Then I'm a hopeless case. Yeah. It's kind of a get out clause sometimes, isn't it? Nah, that's it. I just I'm I'm unlovable and I can't love. And it's almost a way of going, well, I, I won't use my will towards those things. Yeah. It's sort of denying responsibility. I've done that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if we come to the other side a little bit, Joellen. Stand up. Yep. And on this side, we'll come to Julie after that. Yep. I tell myself that I'm honest with myself and others. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you, so you're basically saying, look, basically I'm an honest person. Um, but then you really analyse it and think, oh, maybe I'm not as honest as I think. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Got you. Okay, Jules? Um, that getting the next addiction satisfied is what I need. Mm. And, and what do you mean by what I need? What's it going to give you? Yeah, a good feeling. Yeah, 
you know, that that's what I'm jumping towards, the yeah. good feeling. So you're sort of telling yourself, if I keep engaging addictions, I'll keep getting good feelings, yeah, get, yeah. when actually it's not really the truth, is it? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Leads to more pain, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, great. It hasn't worked. Yeah, yeah. All right, one more on this question. If we go to Canaan at the back, if you stand up, Canaan, that's it. Thanks, Luli. Um, I tell myself that I'm the one who's being harmed when I'm actually harming others. That is a big one for everyone. It's a really, that's a great insight because, you know, and that's what Jesus was getting at when he was talking even in the creation of pain and saying, we're all saying, look, everyone's harmed me, but we're not actually realising that it's the harm I'm doing to others and myself right now that's creating the majority of my pain. Yeah, so it's an awesome insight. Okay, so let's look at our second question. <laughs> oh, Ange is busting to say, you have to hold it in, Ange. <laughs> okay, um, what lies do I tell myself about fear and pain? This is where we get a bit more specific. Maxine, stand up, yep. Uh, she... Fear should be avoided and if I stay quiet, I won't get noticed. Um, yeah, I'll yeah. be accepted and won't get into trouble. Yeah, so so you're telling yourself that fear will be less if you just kind of mouse it through life. Yeah, I'll keep yeah. the peace. I'll yeah. get to keep my job. Be agreeable, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're sort of telling yourself that that'll help you avoid fear when it's not really working, is it? In fact... Fear gets bigger the more we avoid it. Yeah, that's a good one for you, hey. Mm. Come out more. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lani. Yeah, um, I have that one too. I use a cloak of invisibility. <laughs> and so I think, like, no one can see me. I'll just hide here so I won't have to face any fear and pain. And Yeah, and so yeah. you're telling yourself the hiding... Just like Maxine, the hiding makes my fear less. Yeah. Isn't it funny that also the more you try to not stand out, you do actually draw a lot more attention and energy and yeah. stuff from people. And it, it's the more you try to avoid an emotion, the more obvious it becomes to everyone else what exactly. I've found. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> and then I yeah. get, oh, I really want to hide that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. sort of like a cycle that you just, you know, yeah. just goes round and round. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, who else? Uh, if we go to Marie, just there. It's weak to feel fear. I've got to be tough and handle everything. Yes. Yeah, how many other people have that one? And especially physically showing fear? Yeah, wow. Oh, there's a lot of judgment about that, isn't there, about someone who shakes or quavers or, you know, showing our fear where... We feel like that's a that's a sign someone's going to really take advantage. Yeah, when it's not true, when you're actually connected to yourself more emotionally, you can make more wise decisions about because you can feel other people more accurately. You can decide, no, that person is not trustworthy in this situation, but this person is, and I'm more connected. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what else? One more on this question. If we go to Dam. That it's honourable to bear pain, that my value and my culture is based on how well I endure pain. Yeah, yeah. That's also a really good one, isn't it? Yeah. Does anyone else have a, a similar kind of, even though I know that's very culturally strong for you, but it's also, I can feel that in my own, you know, just a woman's ability to be, bear pain is quite a badge a lot of times, isn't it? And for men, oh my gosh, it's like, <laughs> you know, bear the pain, have your leg cut off and don't cry. Like, <laughs> it's full on, isn't it? What about, did anyone come across the lie that your pain has nothing to do with your emotions? <laughs> yeah. I would say a lot of you have that. Uh, I mean, I still want to do that sometimes and look for a natural remedy to what, you know, a herbal remedy, <laughs> a vitamin remedy, a green smoothie remedy when it's my fear that's creating the problem or whatever. Yeah, so that's a common lie that we tell ourselves. Okay, next question. 
How do I believe that my facade protects me from fear and pain? If we go up the back to Graham, and on this side, if we come to Christiana. Yeah. Um, it's like, for me, it's like uh, having learnt not to put my hand on the stove because that causes pain. Yeah. And so what I'm having to do is to learn to go fire walking. Yeah. So you are... Can you explain that a little bit more? Well, it, as a child, I think um, I just felt pain when I was open. Yes. And yes. Um, now what I'm having to do is to have the guts to do something that in the past has always caused pain, for sure. Um, but AJ's telling me that it, I'll be all right, that I can walk across the fire and I won't get my bur feet burnt, yeah. you know? Yeah, so you're saying your facade, your facade, you feel, protects you from the fear, the fear and the pain of being emotionally open. And, yeah, and now, you, now you're having to grow some aspiration to be emotionally open. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, you know what you said, you said, um, it's always hurt me in the past for sure. And this is a common lie we tell ourselves because often this pain has come from childhood and sometimes, like Graham, you probably haven't tried being emotionally open for how many years? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> and so you're almost saying, look, I've had this really long life and every time I was emotionally open it was painful, but really you haven't really tested that theory since you've become an adult, have you? No. No, and no. a lot of us are like that, so we're still imposing the, the family of origin conditions on this big old world that's full of a variety of different people and we, we're still saying, no, but every time I do it, it happens, when really we're just caught up in that childhood experience because we haven't, we haven't taken any risks. Yeah, and yeah. I think it was very early childhood. Yeah, I agree, Graham. Yeah, that's good. Good, uh, good thing to think about. Okay, Christiana, thank you for standing. Um, I believe my facade protects me uh, if I smile a lot at uh -huh. people, which and uh, so if I do that, people will like me and won't reject me or be angry with me. Yeah. So it's um, I put on a smiley face, be pleasant, be you know courteous and all that type of stuff to avoid a whole heap of stuff coming at me. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Hey, did anyone else have a similar one to that? Yeah, 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 it's a big one. Oh, if I'm a happy kid, you know, no problems with me, don't worry about me. Yeah, okay, we come to Ant. Did you have your hand up? I was agreeing, um, oh, okay, but also it's like a preemptive strike. It's a control mechanism, isn't it? Yeah. If I put this facade out there, then I'll, we have this false idea, I'll be able to control how everyone else is going to respond to me. I'll, I'll have the power. When really we are so powerless in that state, we've actually put ourselves at the mercy of everyone else's wants and, and ideas for who we should be. And sometimes it's not even how they want us to be. But we're just doing it. And we're further away from our real self or even our herd self. Yeah, yeah, okay. Neil, you had your hand up, yep, didn't you? I did, yes. I did. Yep. Um, well, I... Just I, hold the mic oh, a bit sorry. closer. Yep. Sorry. Facts, um, the facade um, acts as a, a shield in what I see as a dangerous world. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and I don't act that way, but I... Oh, I don't act that way, but... Um, you know, that's what I feel, essentially. Yeah. And, and it is to do with my, my early childhood as well. Yeah. And what, what is it about your facade, Neil? What is the creation that you create that you think um, protects? Cheerful, bright, um, you know, positive, all yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of us feel frightened, don't we, just to be sad around other people or just be a bit like, oh, I'm having an average day even. You know, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. It's sad, isn't it? Because it's really quite harsh on yourself. It's harsh on your feelings. It's harsh. It feels harsh when I tune into that, when I do that. It's like there's no allowance of any, even a little bit down. Got to be mm. sparky, Mary, mm. you know. And that's, if you imagine treating someone 
a little person like that. It's horrible, isn't it? Mm. And yet that's what we're continuing to do. And this, this whole, remember I talked about how the creation of the facade it's created in childhood, as you said, but we are maintaining it. Mm. So we are treating ourselves mm. like that now. Mm. And it's painful. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It is. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. If we come on this side to Raj and then on this side to Fabio. Thank you. Um, I came up with uh, my facade is really a self-constructed delusional state but I've created it to be my friend, to protect me and keep me safe. Mm -hmm. And it keeps me safe from my fears, but I've realized I've got it upside down and actually my fear is my friend and my facade is my enemy. <laughs> but I've gone and put myself in my enemy's camp and I'm totally addicted to being there and feeling yeah. safe when in fact I'm totally vulnerable. Yeah, I think it's, it's funny, isn't it? It's like, it's easy to say fear is my friend. We don't always feel that, do we? We feel like fear is the enemy. But even you calling your facade the enemy, it's kind of judgmental. It's very judgmental, but I see that I've, I'm so propped up by it that I lean on it. I agree, yeah. Right? And yeah. I'm missing, obviously, my real self which I'm not going to find until I engage the fears and pain. Definitely, definitely. But just be aware of calling it an enemy. It's really there. Remember how it got created when you were just a wee mm. thing, you know, and, and there was pain and you felt you weren't safe to feel it and you got afraid and so this was like survival for you. Mm. And it very much was for you, Raj. And so, yeah. so be... Be aware, all of you, of judging this, you know. that Remember, that's what Jesus wanted to stress to you guys. Like, mm. no, it's there and you think it's serving a good purpose. It's now having a bit of education and saying, look, I'm not <laughs> going to judge and like try and like smash this. I've mm. got to work through with consideration what I'm doing, understanding why I'm doing it and start to deconstruct it. And we'll talk more about that today. Yeah, no, yeah. thank you. That's yeah. very appropriate. Yeah. yeah great. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Fab was over next. Yeah. Um, I found that the f my facade is that changes in every situation to get me love as yep. much as possible. So yep. whatever I feel is love. So yep. around my friends or around family or around females, I become the whatever the female wants. I become whatever the man wants. Yep. Whatever the guy at work wants, just so I can feel like I'm a bit loved. Yeah. And did you do any work, Fab? On remember this question is about how does my facade protect me how do i believe it does it what what kind of things do you do did you did you get into that yeah yeah, yeah. like what i do to do those things to yeah how to, you think it's going to protect yeah I, I become i just i become what everyone wants is what i do and but be careful about this because in some cases it's true we're very sensitive to our environment and we do kind of try and slot in with very demanding people but what i've noticed is that when i'm around say people who are not very demanding and they might even just like like to get to know me sometimes i'm imposing my past painful experiences of the same gender or the same situation onto this new set of people and saying that's what they want of me i'll do it mm. and it's not even true do you know yeah, what i mean yeah yeah so something to think about hey Thanks. Okay, if we go next to you to Laura and then after that we'll move on. Yeah. Um, one of my, um, how I protect myself is emotionally agreeing and emotionally validating females and with males um, making them feel sexually worthy. Yep. So I manipulate them and even, even if I actually speak the truth and disagree with them verbally, the emotion that's coming out of me is still... I don't want you to be angry. I'll say it in a palatable way. I agree with you. Like it's all yeah. slimy stuff coming out of me just so they don't get upset with me. Yeah. But the thing for you to watch as well, Laura, is as we uncover this stuff, hey, is the judgment, is how hard you want to be on yourself about yes, it. Yes, I, yeah. I definitely am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that will be a really important thing for you as you're working through this facade is to remember that lesson all the time. Like because – Every time you get into judging it, it, it just slows the whole process down and really you can't, you can't understand how, where it's come from. Yeah. Yeah, and the exact workings of it. Yeah, yeah. and it might take some time. I think I don't, I don't have the patience. I think I should know it because it's written in front of me and I've yeah. read it a few times. Yeah. But 
And we want to be perfect, hey? We think, oh, look, oh, no. No one will ever love me with all this stuff. When really that's someone who loves us will love us with this stuff or without it, you know? It's not a conditional state, love. Yeah. Thanks. No worries. Okay. And for everyone, this starting off with these questions it really is just a start like these kind of questions are the ones that you can focus on for months to come and still get benefit from and still be learning new things about your facade because remember the facade trades in all this denial and lies and you you're going to have to be a bit dedicated to sort of catch it out and go oh i'm telling myself this whole big thing here and that's not even what i really feel it's just what I'd like to think I feel or believe or want. Yeah. Okay, let's look at the next question. What are my personal techniques for preventing the emotion of fear? Okay, let's go to Rachel on this side and then we'll go to Patricia after that. Food. Food, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who else had that one? Carby food, yummy, warm, in your tummy bread rolls. <laughs> Stuff it down so that that really niggly feeling yep, just gets numb. Yeah, yeah I know that one too. Yeah, Patricia? Okay, so now, Patricia, can I just point I out where the microphone is? Yeah. yeah. I guess I justify and judge and criticise. People, the system, government... I retreat, I run away, <clears throat> bluster my way or bluster my way through. So you're saying whenever you get afraid, you tend to push out and judge others and try to really, um, it's almost a power thing, isn't it, to, to um, make it someone else's problem. Yes, yeah. How, that's a common one as well. Who else does that one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, let's come to Lainey uh, up the back. So if you stand up, Lainey, so Joyce can see you. And then Sheridan on this side. I maintain go-to male friends. Mm-hmm. Yes, and big one for you. Yep. as I was finishing this list, one phoned with an escape hatch. <laughs> wow. That's the power of your soul. Imagine I when you use that power it. for good. <laughs> There's this fan for sale. I'm not yet to ru ready to run away, I said. Yeah, yeah. So, yep, seeking out. And, I, and for us women, a lot of times seeking out a man when we feel afraid is something we've – daddy taught us even. That's a good thing. I feel good when my little girl needs me. And so, you know, that's a big one. Yeah, thanks, Elaine. And Sherry? Uh, feeling and acting superior. Ah, yeah. So how, how does that look? Um, if I start to feel afraid, I'll be like, oh, I'm better than that person. I can help them. They can't see what I can see in them. Yeah. I'll just help them out in the hells, you yeah. know, when we both get there. And, you know, tell myself all sorts of things about yep. being better. Yes. Condescension is a real um, it's a, it's a slimy, it's a sneaky thing that we do, isn't it? Mm. Like it's a way to get away from fear. Mm. I, yes, and I've definitely employed that. When you when there's a, oh, this feels a bit threatening. Oh, actually, I'm better than this. Yep. There's nothing here. I don't even have a problem here. What are mm. you talking about? Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. All right, Zoe. And who haven't we heard from? Lorleen. Um, <clears throat> I talk a lot. Yeah. Um, especially if sex is involved, having sex. Yep. So I it's start like... A talk. Yeah. yeah. And is that uh, about like, oh, I'm feeling afraid, so I'll just fill the space and distract from yep. what might be going to happen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a good insight, hey? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Lorleen? Uh, I keep myself really super busy so that I can avoid anything and then prove that whatever's making me afraid, I can um, take action externally to yeah. remove it. Yeah. Um, yep. Jesus was just talking to me about this this morning before we came over. Like when fear comes up, woo, energizer bunny Mary, you know. <laughs> oh, I'll just do this. Oh, I've got time to do that. I'll just fit that in. And it's all just to avoid just sitting like with what's there. Yeah. 
Yeah, who else does that? Mm, yeah, <laughs> who doesn't do that? <laughs> yeah, it's really important, hey, and this is why it's important to make time and space in your day that is just quiet and still. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, now where are we? We'll do one more on this question, then we'll move on to the last question. So if we go to Ivana. I avoid fear by being a hermit crab. <laughs> Everything yep. in. <laughs> yep. I just want to stay at home, stay away from people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's similar to Maxine sharing earlier and Lani. We just withdraw from life and then – and isn't that horrible over time? You just feel like oh, there's yeah, nothing like happening. Ten years goes by and I think, oh, what have I done with my life? Not – much yeah. really yeah it's a it's a way that we can create more pain for ourselves isn't it opportunities missed and just from this one attitude that we have to fear yeah yes yeah, good one okay all right let's go to our last question what do i feel like doing when i confront the truth about myself who looked at this question uh, if we go to Amber and then Wayne. So right at the back, girls, yep. Um, I feel like it's disgusting, like I'm ugly. So you judge? Yes. <laughs> yep, and I'm, I'm even going to write some of these ones up because these are pretty... Yep, so you judge. And if we go to Wayne just while I'm wiping off... I run off. away. You Deny. run away. <laughs> Yeah. That's not me. <laughs> so you just said too there. You judge. You run away. And you deny. It's not me. That's not true. And do you run it? We could run away emotionally and physically, can't we? Or either or. Like, oh, I'm just absent now. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? You know, <laughs> or we can physically leave. Yeah. And sometimes, like, who was telling me the other night, they physically, like, immigrate. <laughs> they go to another nation <laughs> to run away <laughs> from truth about themselves. Yeah. Okay. What were some other things that people did? Peter, and then we'll go to Katrina after you. And who else? And Monique after that. Um, I want to take physical action and often I want to fix it straight away without actually feeling about it. So, yes. so say Eloisa points out I've just had a conversation with someone and I've you know, lost the plot sort of thing. I want to immediately go to that person and fix it before I feel about it. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's a really good one. Who else does that? And you know it's avoiding feeling about, it's avoiding feeling the fear, oh I might have done something wrong or avoiding the feeling of like shame or the feeling of why did I do that, you know. So it's, 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 a, it's almost, a, it's almost I, I don't even want to get to judging, I just want to quickly fix it, yeah. Yeah, so I uh, would we'll say act, but it's not act in the positive way, is it? It's sort of react or um, try to suppress or, yeah, react without feeling and avoid feeling really, isn't it? Whoops. Okay, and now we had Maxine. Oh, sorry. Katrina, I don't know why I called you that. I'm big on self-punishment and self-attack. Yeah. Beating myself yeah. up. Yep, yep, that's a big one. So self-attack. And that's another one that just feels horrible long-term, doesn't it? <laughs> and, and you know what's even worse is when you sort of, you hear truth about yourself, you self-punish and self-attack, and then you tell yourself, this is the way, this is God's way. I know I have to have more truth and really I'm just being humble and I'm feeling stuff, but we're not. We're, we're doing the opposite of God's way, which is to have compassion and to use the four tools to deal with the causes. We're just trying to punish ourselves out of the effects. Yeah, yeah. Okay, who was next? Yep, Mon. Uh, it's sort of the same as what Pete was saying with ACT, but it's like a, a willpower um, 
I'm going to feel that emotion that's just uh, being pointed out. <laughs> yep. And I'm going to, you know, make myself go there. Yep. But in, in my heart, I don't want to go there. And then I tell myself that I've already dealt with it. Yes. So yes. I'm good now. Yes. <laughs> I'm a good girl. I can get all the, yes. the, the love and, you know, get yeah. back to where I was, where yeah. I thought I was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one, Mon. You do do that. Yeah. And it's funny, isn't it? We're like, okay, I've got that emotion. Right, willpower kick in. I'm going to like feel it. And it's almost like we're trying to jump down to, uh, to the pain that might be there without even recognizing I'm terrified <laughs> to just even be overwhelmed and uh, or even just like oh that was an addiction what's the truth oh, I had a reason for that addiction what's that reason no we just go I'm stopping that or I'm crying I'm trying to repent for the addiction without really deconstructing it or understanding it something I notice when you guys talk about all these things you do when you're faced with truth is there's a strong theme of feeling like when I hear truth about myself that that is related to having an injury or an error it means I'm a bad girl or boy and I have to quickly get back to being a good girl or boy and that's all about childhood experiences isn't it and it's not really the truth the truth of hearing truth about an error from someone who loves you is actually like a ticket to like wow i could get somewhere with this and it, it's not someone telling you you're bad that's a judgment and a lot of these things this self-attack react you know got to do things a lot of that is because we've already judged ourselves for what's being pointed out to us yeah yeah Okay, we have to finish up, you guys, because um, Jesus is going to come up and chat to you about the next exciting instalment. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. It was great. And as I said, I encourage you to keep going with that homework. Yeah. <laughs>